Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to another episode of an honestly very hard challenge. In the last episode, the Bone Keeper returned to Alara's side to watch her struggle in the waves. She had been knocked, kind of on accident, into the pond over here by her sister. Technically, she was trying to attack Kit again, and the loon couldn't possibly let that happen. So she gave her a pretty good shove, and now she's struggling in the waves, struggling just to keep her head above the water. That's when the Bone Keeper decided to get involved again, too. This is kind of like a choice that she has to make now. Either go with her mother again, join her eternal army once and for all, fight by her side until the end of time, or go with her sister instead and indulge in her soft lifestyle. But to be honest, I don't really think that that's for Alara. That sort of path, I just can't imagine her conforming to. Eventually, she's going to lash out again because she is her embodiment of wrath. But we'll come back to these creatures in just a moment. For now, I'd like to finish off our turns with the rest of our tribe mates, because I think this is probably something that we should take care of at the end of our day. So instead, let's actually go back here to Aqua. Poor Aqua and Longshot, who are currently in mourning after Adi has passed away. Now they have one very, very big task ahead of them, too. They have to make sure that they can take care of her remains properly. At least she becomes part of the Bone Keeper's army instead. So I guess they're probably going to leave that to Longshot. He has plenty of roots around here to try his best to paw up. Hopefully he's going to be a little bit luckier than our previous tribe mates were. But Aqua? I think she's going to go back to the battle with the Bear Yina. Maybe she would make a little promise to Addy in this way. She's going to put a stop to this once and for all, and then they can finally be together again. Because Aqua is also very, very close to the end of her lifespan. So the question is, where on earth did that bear Yina run off to? Unfortunately, as this killer bear Yina has come out into the open, the other one has kind of skittered away. I know that they were pretty close to the shore, though. They were actually hunting bunnies down here before. So maybe if we're lucky, one of these bluebirds will come over to truly pinpoint their location. But for now, Longshot, or Jericho, rather, let's bring you down here. Can you sense the bear Yina? Oh, there we go. Oh, going toward the palm trees. Are the bunnies actually leading him over there? Oh my gosh, the bunnies are actually outsmarting our tribe mates too. If they're going to lead the killer bear Yina right underneath the palm tree, that would be the perfect way for us to stun him, and then it'll be much easier to take the bear Yina down. I can't actually remember how many days the bear Yina had on his lifespan though. If we bring Aqua down here, maybe we could check. Yeah, you two aren't going to be able to do any attacking on this turn, unfortunately. We need all three of your turns for that. So six days remaining on this killer bear Yina's lifespan. That would be one point from you, two points from you. Yeah, you know what? We're not going to risk it. Let's just have Aqua skitter back a little bit. We could actually bring her over here. Because if the bunnies are going to lead the killer bear Yina this way, we probably want to be ready for him. So Jericho, why don't you actually stand right on top of the stump? Then we can really see the land. You'll be able to call out to Aqua if you see the killer bear Yina stumbling out of the grasses over here. And Aqua, you can just lay low for now. You probably need an extra night to grieve anyways, far away from the chaos of battle. Now don't think I forgot about you, Longshot. Why don't you go ahead and try to use it this route over here? All three of your turns? Nope, unfortunately it didn't work yet but we still have a little bit more time before the remains are going to disappear. I kind of feel like that would be a good indication that they've been taken into the Bone Keeper's army. If we can't find a route to dig up before the bones vanish, then we can assume that the Bone Keeper has taken them. Now I guess we should probably head on over to the kids next. The kids who are currently being swallowed by bunnies. Oh my gosh, Vixa, how many bunnies are there around you right now? You're very, very good at bunny counting, so I'm sure you know exactly how many. It looks like we have four around here that you and Longshot could actually go after. Does a Longshot have enough strength to take one down? Yes. So he's actually a little bit stronger than his father is. So if he's brave enough, I guess you two could go hunting together. Though I can't really imagine that you're going to get past Mars's watch. Despite all of her energy and all of her ambition too, she just can't seem to sneak past her father. Her father is not going to let her get one step closer to that bear Yina, so there's no way that she's going after this bunny over here. She might be able to convince him that it's okay to go backwards. 
After all, Mars probably knows that Awkward and Morgana went out this way too. And in fact, Morgana, why don't you go ahead and grab this bunny over here? Maybe we could even leave this out as bait. They're investigating this area because they're sure that somebody is around here. They're sure there must be some sort of wanderer or something. I'm pretty sure that a bird actually swooped down here in the last episode, so something must have been here to cause it to attack. So Awkward and Morgana are trying their best to play it safe, especially with their brand new baby on the way. Three days remaining before she can give birth. So I guess you have a little bit of extra time to do some more exploring. Let's bring Awkward in first, as this bunny makes a feast of this berry bush over here, but we're going to let him be for now. Awkward, why don't you slip into the grasses? Oh, has even more bunnies come out? Wait a second, is this land just like completely overrun by bunnies then? Well, that's probably not a good sign. If there is something taking down the bunnies out here, it's probably one of the Baryinas, in fact. So let's be very, very careful. I don't know, Morgana, should we have you go a little bit further? I know you don't want Awkward to do this all alone. He has gotten so brave in his time, though. Back when we first found him, when he was so shy and timid, there is no way that he would have charged off into the grasses on his own like this. So you know what, Morgana? You two are going to do this together, or you're not going to do it at all. You're here to support him every step of the way. That does mean that we'll probably want to have the kids come back here to just guard the meat, though. So, Vixa, why don't you jump right back here for us? You can follow the scent of the bunny meat with Longshot Jr. We'll have him settle down right next to the berry bush. And I guess you could actually go ahead and pick up some of the grasses here, too, just to be safe. You never know what might be lurking in that darkness. I'm sure that Vixa is trying her best to soothe his worries, though. While his father has grown so brave, he's kind of taken up Awkward's role in a way. Longshot Jr. is a very, very timid, too. So don't you worry, Longshot. With Vixa by your side, she's going to make sure that nothing ever comes up to startle you. She's going to make sure that you're safe and sound. Now one more hop for you, Awkward. Do you smell anything? Just roots? Just bunnies? Yeah, no sign of any wanderers just yet, and definitely no sign of any Berginas. That being said, it looks like the bunnies have definitely made a little community out here. Maybe this is even something you'd want to pass on to Longshot. A little bit of information about his previous home, because this is where we found him before. It kind of makes me wonder if maybe part of his true family is waiting out here. I'm not sure if his parents would still be alive, but I suppose maybe one of his littermates would be. We always kind of assumed that Longshot was probably cast away from his tribe, though. With that no paw, maybe he was just considered to be too weak to live out here. So it's a good thing that we swept him under our wing. Now, Mars, I know you're going to still keep a very close eye on the babies, so go ahead and grab that extra acorn for us. We'll have you knock down some more, too, and then stand right on top of the stump over here. That way you'll be able to see them no matter how deep they go into the grasses. Now, last but not least before we go back to these three anyways. Let's go over to Akkadian and his family too. He's still not thoroughly convinced on Pernille's views, I think. Pernille doesn't want the family to go back to the main part of camp because she's sure that her sister is just going to turn on her. They basically have starred this little forbidden family together after all. The Bone Keeper would not be pleased with you, Nunu. But Akkadian, on the other hand, he believes that his family would love to meet Nunu. In fact, he kind of thinks that his son would benefit from some of their earliest traditions. Long ago, their family was actually known as Comet's Champions. They worked together with the Cycle of Rebirth, too. So Moon Eye would let them know if they needed to jump in and save somebody from a needless death. Akkadian kind of cast off those ways when he decided to live on his own, so I'm not sure if he still feels the same pull to Moon Eye or not but I'd imagine that Nunu could probably get behind that very, very easily. He is the strongest one on the island, too, so he should be able to protect everybody with ease. For now, though, I guess we could probably have Nunu skitter on over here. Maybe Akkadian could actually tell him some of those stories. About Comet and about... What was his mother's name? Wait a second... Comet and Celestite, that's right. He looks so much like Celestite, too. So it should be pretty easy for little Nunu to imagine Grandma Celestite. She was a very important part of their tribe before she passed. 
I'm sure Perniel is probably okay with the stories, too. She could even share some of her own stories, I guess. Though they won't be quite so happy. I wonder if she's a little bit jealous of that. Of course, jealous again. Envy always finds a way to weasel itself into her thoughts. She's trying to get better, but I'm sure it's still going to take a little bit of time. Let's just have her come on over here so she can take down this bunny for us. She has four days remaining before she's going to give birth. So still plenty of time for her to collect food for her family. Now that should be everyone. Except for you, Alara. So now, no more stalling. It's time for you to make your choice. A lot of you seem to agree that you just can't see her striking off with the loon. That doesn't seem like her style. Alara always thought that her little sister was far too weak to lead a war, and she wasn't really wrong. I mean, I guess, in a way, she has been leading this war against the killer Bariginas. She's done an excellent job of helping to take down plenty of these beasts. But she wasn't strong in the way that her mother was hoping for, and that's why Alara considers her to be something of a failure. So I can't really see any reason why she would reach out for her paw right now. In fact, the only thing that I can see her doing is paddling on over to the shore, jumping up right next to the killer Berghina, and making her stance very, very clear. She is going to stick with the Bone Keeper to the end. But then I wonder... Do you think that betrayal has really hurt her? Like she thought that her mother was going to be behind her every step of the way because she never ever doubted her mother before. I mean, sure, they had their disagreements, especially regarding these healing fruits. They did fight quite a bit when Nicole was still around, but she never questioned the mission. So what if Alara thinks that this is actually her chance to strike off on her own path? What if she thinks that she can take a swing at the red-eyed beast itself? Maybe she thinks that her poison has made her invincible. It certainly seemed to do a number on our tribe mates after all. So why wouldn't she think that this would take the Baryina down once and for all too? Let's have her go ahead and land her attack, which unfortunately is going to be just shy of the amount that she needed to take the Baryina down. One day remaining on its lifespan. That does mean that the Bone Keeper should have just enough time to get her own retribution, too. To put her daughter in her place and claim her as one of her own. So Alara's plan has backfired in the worst of ways. Now, not only is she going to be part of that army till the end of time, but I would imagine that Nicole is probably not too happy with her right now. Meanwhile, Kit and Laloon must be completely frozen on the spot. They had assumed that Alara was going to betray them here, that she was going to lead the Sparagina to fight against them. But instead, she turned and attacked her mother? Like, did she mean to do that? I guess they're going to find out tonight, because we should be ready to skip the day. So we'll have them wait right there at the waterside, so they can see firsthand what's going to happen in this battle, as both of them end up falling side by side. How poetic is that? Taken by Alara's poison after all, but just one second too late. I'm pretty sure that growl that I heard was probably just the Baryina attacking, right? Like we don't have another Baryina out here, do we? We have this one over here, but it must be the same one. Oh no, it looks like that bunny wasn't able to lead him properly over to the palm tree after all. He must have hopped up here to get another taste of these berries. The greedy, greedy bunnies. They're all so smart until their greed eventually gets the best of them. But let's not forget about Laloon and Kit over here. In fact, Laloon, let's actually have you come on over here so you can pick up all of the Spurgina meat for us. It's probably for the best that we clean that up as soon as possible. We don't need one of the bluebirds stealing away with it after all. Actually... Oh, did all the... Oh no, there's one bluebird, okay. Yeah, but most of the bluebirds did disappear. Is that because most of the killer Berginas are gone? That's awfully suspicious. Was that our deity's way of actually showing us where the killer Berginas were then? Using these birds to help guide us in the right direction. How fitting, too, that the one killer Berigina left is basically in the same place as the bluebird. Very, very curious. If that is Solaris, I guess it would make even more sense. 
He's using the bluebirds to ferry the deity's message. I would say that we could always use Kit and Laloon's turns to try to find some roots to actually put Alara's remains to rest. But for the sake of the story, I kind of prefer her fate being this way instead. I mean, we could still always have them try to pop the roots. Oh, really? Really, Laloon? Oh my gosh, how fitting is that? And let me guess long shot. You're not gonna be able to paw this up in one turn? Nope, definitely not. Not even all three of your turns. What a ripoff. So what can we use to explain this? Maybe Alara's still not going to follow her sister, even in death and even in her current predicament. So maybe Kit should even try to join in too. If we bring her over here, where I'm pretty sure we have a couple more routes for them to try. We'll have her go ahead and paw the ground as well after she takes down one of these bunnies. Of course, Kit can't resist a good easy meal, and I'm sure she needs it anyways. Laloon must just be in shock, so we'll have her go ahead and have a nibble on the next turn. And for now, let's turn back to Aqua. So, can you guys actually step in and take a swipe at the Baragina this time? If we bring Jericho all the way down here, you should be able to jump to right where his meat is. Oh, maybe we could actually take him down this time. You know what, Aqua? I think you actually can. With Jericho's help too, of course. And I'm sure he'd be willing to jump over here and land his quick attack too. So you have four more days remaining? That means with both of your swings, you can take down the third and final killer Bergina of the island. So that means we've done it. After we take care of Addie's remains, after we have everybody return to the heart of the camp, every last one of the Bone Keeper's army is finally vanquished from this land, assuming nothing else pops up in the process at least. That means we've finally taken care of the final battle. So, Laloon, you can actually rest easy now. Your mother has been defeated, at least for the moment. Then everybody can focus on making sure that nobody ever falls victim to her again. That nobody ever falls into her grasp by mistake. Still no sign of anybody back here, huh? Just the bunny is running absolutely everywhere around the shore. So I'm not sure if our little bait trap is actually going to work, but I'm sure that little Vix is still willing to give it a try. In fact, I wonder if she would actually add a little bit more meat to the pile. If we bring her into the grass over here, maybe we could wait for one of those bunnies to hop just a little bit closer. There's so many of them, one of them is bound to hop right into her grass. We could have Longshot come on over here too. Yes, so we could actually help. Oh, perfect long shot. Vix is very, very impressed. She must be rubbing off on you just a little bit, if you were brave enough to land a hit. Awkward would try, but we know how that's going to end. We'll have to bring Morganite down here instead. Oh, another nest? Oh, if only we had one of those healing fruits nearby. I don't know, Morganite. I'm not sure that it's worth it for you to try to have your baby here. And in fact, with only two days remaining, we better find you a way to get out of this grass. So I guess the bunnies are actually going to have to wait. They're going to have to stay here until Vixa can take care of them. We need Morgana to get back to the healing fruit so she can build her nest over here too. In fact, with her slow movement speed, I'm not sure if she's going to be able to eat the healing fruit again. But Longshot Jr. wasn't born with a healing fruit, so maybe that's her family's key. So we're leaving the rest of you, kids. It's dangerous work, but I know you guys are going to be careful. And if Vixa starts to get in over her head, then I'm sure Longshot Jr. is going to reel her in. He can be like the voice of reason for their pair. Somebody's got to make sure that she doesn't go too crazy. Mars is going to be so, so happy to finally see his mate again pretty soon, too. So a couple more acorns for you. Then why don't we actually have you call out from the stump? I don't think anybody has done that yet, and I'm sure you've noticed that the Baragina's no more. So that call must be a way to communicate with Jericho somehow. Maybe he could even find a way to call out to you, too. Victories upon victories today. I'm sure Nunu absolutely adored those stories about his grandparents. He probably wants to hear some more, in fact. So we'll bring him right over here. That way Acadian can get a little bit closer to the edge of their territory. I think it's about time that he starts clearing out more of this grass, too. If they are truly going to stay here, then they need to have more room to work with. We'll have Perniel return to help as well, since she has three more days before she's going to give birth. 
So come on over here, right on the opposite side of your baby, and we'll have you pick up the crosses over here as well. So that should be the end of this turn too. Let's go ahead and skip the day again, and then we'll see if our victorious warriors can make their way back to the main part of camp. The only problem is, we still haven't successfully laid Addy's remains to rest. So long shot, let's have you try first. Three attempts to pull up this route. Oh, long shot, I'm starting to get worried. Hello? Oh my gosh, another scorpion? Bloom the scorpion. And she is making quite a quick feast of all these berries. I'm actually surprised that she didn't try to steal this meat down here. Well, that's lucky for us, but we better make sure that we pick it up fast. Aqua, with your three remaining days, let's have you go ahead and pick up both of these patches of meat for us. Jericho, do you think you could actually give her a little bit of meat too? I mean, she's a scorpion. I know she's not related to Nicole, unless this is some sort of trap that she's laid. But surely that would give Jericho pause. Should we just sniff around too, just to make sure? Like, only one wanderer, right? No dangers around the island? Yeah, it's just her. Just this strange, muddy scorpion. I mean, maybe she could actually help us with our situation with Addy. That would be one way to gain our tribe's trust. Yeah, Bloom, why don't you actually come on over here? We'll have you use your two remaining turns to try to pop the root over here. Oh no! Oh, that would have been so perfect if she was actually able to dig it up for us. I'm seriously starting to get worried though. Aqua doesn't have enough turns to pop a root either. There's one over here though, I guess you could give that a try. No, that didn't work. Oh, there we go. On the very last turn, Jericho. Oh my gosh. Aqua is going to be very, very grateful for you. If not for that, I'm pretty sure that her remains are going to disappear on this time. So we would have been in some serious trouble. But yeah, now this little mystery over here has me very, very curious. Do you think there's any possibility that Bloom actually has a connection to Nicole? Or is she just going to be shunned by her tribe because of her scorpion tail? Something that she has no control over, even though she has no idea why it upsets our tribe so. I guess that means that we'll be doing one more episode of this series, just to tie up any loose ends in our stories. We'll be seeing the last remaining babies born on this island as Morganite finds a place to make her nest. And of course, as Perneal and Acadian have a few more babies of their own. It's kind of sad because this has been one of my favorite stories to tell so far, but I'm happy with the progress that we've made, and I'm really, really happy with the new developments to our lore. So I think it's about time that we moved on to something new, but we'll have one more episode to say goodbye to all of these characters. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!